and we have come to the last chapter of money magnetism and it's a very short chapter and in some ways it's a really good chapter to finish and um, at the same time celebrate Swami's anniversary. The chapter is titled Be Practical in Your Idealism and uh, Swami has put the title in quotation marks. The reason? Because Master told him that he needed to be practical in his idealism. You see, on the spiritual path, we can get very idealistic to the point where we become very ineffectual in this world. When you look at the topics that Master was teaching, when he was doing his lecture campaigns throughout America, there were topics like how to rid your consciousness of worry, how to handle criticism, how to overcome your bad habits, how to overcome temptation, how to be a good friend to other people, how to be a good wife, a good husband, how to be a good employee, a good employer, you know, these are all very, very practical subjects. Normally on the spiritual path, you would expect that, you know, um, that probably teach you that, hey, this, oh, this is a great big ocean of suffering, this earth, and your job is to really get out of it. But really, you know, um, that's not what Master was teaching, even though that teaching is also true. It is true that earth is not our true home and that we must um, work towards um, getting out of this so that we not, do not remain on this cycle of birth and death and rebirth and, and the wheel keeps turning. That is true. And some of us who are inclined that way can quite easily, you know, think that, well, let me just um, maybe go and live in a monastery or tune out completely from this world. But you know how effective will we be if we do not relate to the world the way the world is? Imagine if Master, when he came to the West and he was only teaching that we needed to get out of this ocean of suffering. People wouldn't have been able to relate to it. Swami says, um, and this is quoted in the um, book uh, Light Bearer, he says, despite the gloomiest forebodings heard often these days, and by the way, he said this in 1972. Not much has changed, huh? <laughs> Despite the gloomiest forebodings heard often these days, very few people want to drop out. There, and everybody's anxious to do the right thing. What they respond to are teachings that show them how to bring spiritual values to the world that they live in and not examples of spiritual seekers who abandon the world for their own salvation. And so really, when we share these spiritual teachings, we've got to meet people where they're at rather than where we are at or what we think is the highest teaching and that's what we should share. And in fact, there's quite a lot of joy when you meet people where they're at. Because then some light bulb goes on and you can feel their joy. Whereas when we share something that's too beyond what a person is ready for, we just make them despondent. I um, had a couple come here today to buy a um, plum tree and um, 
I just mentioned to them that uh, I was getting ready for a meditation class that I was teaching and they asked me, you know, um, what kind of a meditation it was and I told them I'm a disciple of Paramahansa Yogananda and then they told me that they were Buddhists and so I said to them, I said, oh, one of my, I have a favorite Buddhist monk, he lives in Perth and they said, oh, and they named a Buddhist monk that they knew in Perth and it so happened that that was the same Buddhist monk that I was talking about, you know. And so when we, when I found that rapport with them, met them at a level where I was able to meet them, where we had something in common, it's like we developed a bond. It's almost felt like we were friends, rather than me telling them about this path, I just met them where they were at. They were Buddhist, and that's why they asked me if the meditation I was practicing was Vipassana. And yeah, and then we made um, friends with each other. And so I think we can um, be more effective when we um, meet people where they're at. So anyway, coming back to money magnetism and being practical in our idealism, what it really means is we've got to see reality for what it is rather than projecting our fantasy onto this world. See it for what it is and see what needs doing right now. Sure, we can dream, and you know, in our dreams, we can create a whole heap of fanciful things. But if we stay in that dream world while living on this earthly plane, we won't be very effective. If we dream, we must also work towards materializing this dream. You see, in the astral world, you can materialize things by just mere thought. So you feel like eating a mango, all you have to do is think of a mango, and that mango will appear. But when you're living in this world, and you feel to eat a mango, you then have to go out to a veggie store or supermarket and find a mango. Bring it home, cut it up and eat it. Right? So physical effort is necessary. And so, and often I've noticed with myself, with other people as well, sometimes there are certain tendencies in us that serve as an obstacle in materializing our dreams, our visions. And often that obstacle is our own perfectionism. That if I can't do, um, if I can't go all out, then I will do absolutely nothing. Because if I do absolutely nothing, then I, the risk of going wrong is not there. But then nothing happens either. Um, I quoted this um, that Asha had written in her book Light Bearer, and it said, um, Do a good thing now and a better thing later. As in, don't wait for something to be perfect for you to then put it out there. When you look at some of Swami's books and you look at the history of those books, <laughs> Swami would often write something and then sometime later he would revise it. He would add a bit, he would take away some things that he thought was no longer needed and he did that quite often. And so, and it's okay. Do a good thing now do something better later. 
if you look at um, when Master came to um, the West, one of the things he did in order to get his teachings out was he wrote correspondence courses. He wrote quite a few of those. And um, something about cosmic science and um, metaphysical... I don't know all those names, but he used all of those words in um, those courses that he wrote. And then he wrote preceptor lessons. And then it all culminated in what is then now known as the SRF lessons. And so Swami, when he started Ananda, he needed money. Every work comes to a point where it needs money. And so what Swami thought he would do is he would write a course. And he wrote 14 Steps in Higher Awareness, which is the art and science of Raja Yoga that we now know it as. And he didn't have a lot of time because he was teaching just about every night um, in that whole um, Bay Area around San Francisco. And he really only had Friday night when he would go up to Ananda and Friday night he would write something and while the students thought it was a great cause Swami wasn't very happy he wasn't satisfied and so some months later he actually revised it and so being practical in your idealism means start whatever idea it is you have right now, start doing that good work. As long as you are doing more good than harm, go for it. Don't wait for it to be 100% perfect. And this is something I too need to hear. In fact, I've learned so much about money in this book, Money Magnetism. I hope you have too. Just because we can't get, uh, you know, 10 acres or 20 acres and a full retreat uh, center and a whole community doesn't mean that we don't do the next step. You know, nothing, um, in this world, things don't progress in giant leaps. It's always one step at a time. As in what we have got now is a good thing. And I think we need to acknowledge that. And the better can come later. And we need to think about, okay, what is the next step for us? And things always happen one step at a time. And then looking back, we realize, wow, we've come a long way from where we were. When I look at where we were in 2014 and where we are right now, We've progressed so much. In 2014, the altar was against that wall. And now in 2022, the altar is against this wall. I mean, that too is progress. Because this is the eastern side. That was the southern side. But we didn't know that the altar needed to face the east. But at the time, we did the very best for what we knew and for who we were at the time. And so we've all got to start somewhere. You know, if you have a particular idea, think of it in terms of, okay, what is the smallest way in which I can put this idea into practice? How can I manifest it? If, uh, if your phone is all you have got 
to do a video recording of yourself, maybe teaching a meditation class, then just use your phone. Shelley and I were discussing maybe there are quite a few of us who have trained as meditation teachers and if we could just maybe make a recording of us doing a very short guided meditation practice, not even the whole Hongso practice, maybe just a little one minute, two minute clip of it and maybe we could then, you know, start putting it on on our Facebook pages, on our Instagram, but just giving people a taste for what we have to offer. And that recording doesn't have to be perfect. Devi is doing a bit of work for me at the moment in this area, and she specifically wanted um, videos that were not professionally recorded, that were just done by amateurs on their phone. Because she said in the world of social media, that's more relatable than something that's done professionally. And something that's done too professionally on social media can make it seem like, oh, this must be a really expensive place to go to. Where something that's just done with, you know, by an amateur using just their phone, um, it seems like, yeah, I'd like to go and try it. These people seem just like me. Um, just trying to see what else um, I've got here. Um, I don't know, does anybody want to read this bit? Because I'm having trouble um, with my eyesight reading what I've written in pencil. This uh, two paragraphs here. The second last two. If you suggest complete renunciation of the monastic type, you'll leave the vast majority of people behind you unaffected or despondent. As that Swami said today, vast numbers might be brought to the spiritual path provided spirituality be presented in a way that they can relate to their present values and that isn't merely a reproach to their values. So that's what it really means, you know, being practical in your idealism. Whether it's to do with um, money magnetism, whether it's got to do with magnetizing people to these um, um, teachings that Master has given us, it's always... What is the next step? So that brings us actually to the very end of money magnetism. Is there anything anybody wanted to share? Maybe you've had some experiences in these uh, weeks that we've been doing this money magnetism course or um, anything uh, that comes to mind. I have something to share. I can't remember if I've shared this or not, but um, Alia, our daughter's car, was um, she got a quote to fix it. Um, it got bashed into a few times and it couldn't get a warrant. And she got a quote for six and a half thousand dollars. And so we thought, mm, that's you know worth more than the car's worth. Um, and so then Paul put it out there. Paul's very good at attracting good deals, and um, he found on Facebook a car that was exactly the same colour, um, slightly different, like it was a Honda Civic, a Honda Accord or Civic or something, and um, the guy had been in a crash and he'd wrapped himself around a tree and basically that side of the car was broken but everything else had the right parts. Um, and so we got it, we got it bought over like an hour later um, and we paid um, I think $400 for the car and $100 for towing. And then we spent the weekend um, taking the parts off Alia's car and putting the other parts on this car. <laughs> and we did it. It was really fun with Paul's dad. Um, and then we just had the other car taken away. Um, somebody paid us $100 for it um, <laughs> to take it away. And so we basically fixed her car for like $300. Yeah. Oh, that's that's, great. And that was all part of that. Yeah, it was the same principle. It was yeah. that we needed that. And then... Yeah. If, 
we put it out there and then um, it wasn't, um, a, a, you know, take it to a mechanic and get it fixed. It wasn't, it was a creative solution that none of us could have planned for. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. Beautiful story. Did anybody else have anything to share? Maybe even a realization you may have had while we've been doing this? I had to find um, some money for, for something. Um, and it was for my friend Manisha and, and um, she needed a breast pump and some other bits and pieces. And, she was having a little bit of a crisis because she had to go to the hospital and she didn't have these things and I was just heading out the door and remembered, oh that's right, I've, I've got like $150 in, in um, Prezi card vouchers and I thought, oh that was really good and then the next day I found I had $100 in Prezi, another $100 in Prezi card vouchers that I'd forgotten about as well, so it didn't cover it but yeah, it went a yeah. long way to help me. <laughs> when inflation started going up and access to the supermarkets got more difficult and the groceries in the supermarkets, the veggies were looking so awful. And my grocery bill was constantly climbing. I wanted a way to bring the costs down. And I remembered Swami's uh, discussions about alfalfa sprouts and our discussions about sprouts in general. And then I just felt this joy like I'm, I'm very good at being very focused and very concentrated. I'm, I'm very strong in my will. And sometimes, even when I apply those things, I'll get results. But I may not have joy with them as well. And I think there was a point when we were in the middle of the lectures on concentration as a means of attracting money, that I did get very concentrated and very focused on the sprouts. I mean, you, you see how many I brought, right? <laughs> you know, like I, I have spreadsheets now with specific timings of when to plant things and how long they're going to take and, you know, that kind of thing. But the thing that was really different for me was that it also brought me a huge amount of joy because most of the time I work with people who are in the subconscious mind, shall we say, certainly not in a good space and having the sprouts in my office it's like this little living thing that is just alive and growing and excited to be alive and so in between my clients I water them and I talk to them and I stroke the microgreens and it's actually been really good for me so for me the lesson has been not just about how to make money but also how to do that in a way that brings joy as well. And where there's joy, there's magnetism. Mm -hmm. So next, is there anything else? No? Next week we'll start um, lessons in meditation, more of a thorough a book study of it. And I think in the first chapter in there, there's probably yoga postures and I think there are yoga postures there, right? Or at least some yoga postures and also, yeah, we'll explore all of it actually. I think it'll be fun because... I don't even do that when we do our four-week beginner's meditation, even though that's the book, that's the textbook. Uh, a lot of it we kind of just, you know, um, either don't touch it or go through it very, very quickly because we want people to learn the meditation technique. But I think that um, 
doing a thorough study of the book will help us to refine uh, meditation practice and also how we can practice um, in a way where we spend more time in alert states rather than you know in subconscious states um, and explore the techniques of you know the expansion and visualization and all of that in a lot more detail and especially like you know having done all the parts two three four five many of us we've got all the way to Kriya it'll be good to go all the way back to Hongso and see what our understanding of Hongso is now that we understand what Kriya is and because all that makes a difference as well um, you know when you first practice energization exercises um, it doesn't feel like or seem like much but then once you have Kriya you begin to understand get a better understanding of the purpose of energization exercises and I don't think that understanding ever stops growing that realization just keeps on getting deeper and deeper and deeper and so I'm quite looking forward to starting lessons in meditation next week And if the ad for um, meditation course comes up for you as a sponsored ad, do like it. Maybe share it. Share it if you feel to, if you want to put a little comment, because the more comments, the more likes, um, the more it gets shown to people. Yeah, Devi is creating some really good ads. She's been a breath of fresh air for me here. Yeah.